Well, in this uh, example problem, well, I, I posed it. This could be a lecture, I suppose, as well. But I posed it as a, as an example problem, uh, uh, as an application of um, uh, the Bios of our law. And what I want to do is look at this example of a finite length straight wire uh, carrying a, a current I. And I've got this finite length wire that's uh, current uh, lined along the Z axis here. Here's X, Y, and Z. And uh, the current I is going up. Uh, the, uh, uh, and then what I want to do is I want to go along its perpendicular bisector out of distance R in the X, Y plane and find the magnetic field at this point P. Right. Uh, I've lined it up so that I'm exactly at the center of this uh, wire segment. The wire has a total length of capital L. And uh, so I'll set it up so the bottom of it is at minus L over 2. And uh, uh, up the, the uh, uh, top is at L over 2. So the total length is of length L. And I've got a current I going up. That's a nice steady, steady current. Uh, if you uh, uh, use the Bios of our law, then uh, let me come down here. You need to uh, chop this up into a small dl vector. So I'll go up here a distance z above uh, here. That's a little easier to see from a side view. So if I'm looking right down the x uh, coordinate, or maybe perpendicular to this r, uh, then uh, uh, so that this little triangle here is perpendicular to me. Uh, then I will go out a distance r to get to that point p. And uh, it goes from minus l over 2 to l over 2. But now you can you can kind of see, I think, here my ideal vector for just this little segment. I'll have that at a height z above the axis. And the, the length dl I'll just use as dz. And so dl vector is going to be dz, the infinitesimal length of this uh, small segment here, at a height uh, z above the, uh, uh, above the origin. And it's in the z positive z direction, which is the k hat direction. Uh, the, uh, that uh, is, uh, uh, is really this vector here is the one that points from the piece of current producing it to the point where I want the magnetic field. And so on this view, that's this distance. Uh, that's a distance r out from the origin in the xy plane. So this distance here from the origin to p is little r. And you see that I get this uh, uh, right uh, uh, triangle, uh, which I've defined uh, alpha here as, the, uh, uh, as this angle up here. Uh, this uh, hypotenuse of this little right triangle, well, it's got a side z and a side r, and so the hypotenuse is the square root of r squared plus z squared, and that's just the, 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 the length of this uh, vector here, the magnitude of uh, capital R. Uh, I could uh, uh, use Cartesian coordinates in this <laughs> uh, and write this r vector from here to here. If you notice, I'm going to go uh, from the, to get to that point, I could go straight over in this direction, or I could go uh, down z, or go uh, z in the minus k hat direction, and then go out r, and that's in the r hat direction. So I could also write this in this fashion. And uh, again, the magnitude of that is just, uh, since uh, k hat and r hat are perpendicular, is just the magnitude of the, the first component plus the magnitude of the second component squared, uh, square rooted. So r, e either geometrically or from vector, gives is this uh, distance uh, r squared plus z squared. All the directions uh, one can uh, look at, if you, if you use the right-hand rule, you'll find that r hat uh, cross theta hat is in the, the z positive z direction, k hat. Uh, k hat uh, cross uh, uh, cross r hat is in the theta hat direction, and uh, just to make a complete set, uh, theta hat uh, cross k hat is um, in the uh, uh, theta, theta hat uh, cross k hat is in the r hat, and that's using those little unit vectors along with uh, k hat in the uh, uh, z direction. There's top view. There's kind of the side view. 
And you have that. So now it's really just plug in all this stuff into the BOS of our law. So DL vector is DZ, and so BOS of our law, I just write it here. Uh, I'd have DL vector crossed into R hat. R hat I could I could get here. But it's probably going to be a little bit easier if I uh, if I just use the right hand rule <laughs> and get the magnitude of this vector. So the magnitude of dv is going to be mu naught, the magnitude of ideal, ideal, and uh, the uh, uh, magnitude of r squared, and then the sine. Well, the angle that it's the sine of is the angle between dl vector and r vector. So so up here it's really the angle from here to here, or in the side view in this angle. And if I define this as alpha, then that's 180 degrees minus alpha, since this is a straight straight line. But the sine of 180 minus alpha uh, is, uh, uh, is the sine, uh, sine, well, sine of that vanishes, uh, uh, minus uh, 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 cosine sine, and the two minuses would cancel out. So sine of 180 minus alpha is just sine alpha. So that's the magnitude. So you could get that, uh, everything else being equal. Uh, however, one way that you could also do it is just use the cross product. DL vector cross R hat is, uh, that's just this up here, DL vector cross R hat is DZ. Remember, DL vector is DZ in the K hat crossed into where we just got that R vector was, uh, was this expression. Uh, and so if I divide it by the length, I get uh, this. And if you take that cross product, well, k hat crossed into k hat, that vanishes. Any vector uh, is, uh, crossed into itself uh, is 0. And k hat cross r hat is this. And so I get dz, I'll get r, little r, I'll get big R, uh, k hat cross uh, r hat. And uh, k hat cross r hat, I'll do up here. Well, k hat uh, uh, cross uh, r hat is theta hat, which is kind of nice. So this simply uh, dl vector cross r hat is just dz r uh, little r capital R theta hat. And if you look at that, that's just this expression, dl vector cross r hat. So plug this in for dl vector cross r hat, dz a little r over r theta hat. Just plug that in there. And uh, uh, then I put in what r is. r is, a, uh, well, it was up above. r is r square root of r squared plus z squared. And I have to cube that. I pick up one from the unit vector and one from the r, one over r squared dependence. And you see that you get db vector, even for the straight line segment, uh, that entails having to do an integral. So now you just add up all the dvs over z as z goes from minus l over 2 to plus l over 2. And so that's just the continuous sum, minus L over 2 to L over 2, of this quantity here. I can pull out the uh, uh, constant terms that don't depend on z. Well, theta hat doesn't depend on z. <laughs> uh, it, uh, so you pull that one out. Uh, the uh, mu naught i, uh, little r, I can pull that out, and I'm left with this integral. And then I just looked it up and found that this integral, remember it's an integral over z, so as far as the integration of z is concerned, little r is a constant. And if you look up in integral tables or look up online, you see that this integral, the indefinite integral, is z over r squared, square root of r squared plus z squared. And that has to be evaluated from minus l over z equal minus l over 2 to z equal plus l over 2. When we do that, uh, at the upper limit, I get this. Plug in L over 2. At the lower limit, I have to subtract off the lower limit, minus L over 2. Uh, these two are the same, really. 
And so when I add these two, uh, my L over 2 plus L over 2, uh, I just get L over that whole uh, uh, denominator. Now you get a little bit of cancellation in that I get from the previous terms that were factored out. I get an R here, and I get an R squared here. So I get a 1 over R. And then what's left is this term. Uh, this kind of explains why there was some discrepancy early on, uh, because this is a finite a, a wire segment of length L. And you see that it uh, it is not quite, <laughs> Uh, if, if L is finite uh, uh, values, if L is, is uh, an R are of the same quantity, then, then you get something different than the 1 over R that uh, dependence that uh, Ersted found. But if you have a very, very long wire, maybe one that's infinitely long, so let L go to infinity in that expression, then I can take this finite length wire result and get the infinitely long straight current carrying wire, uh, which uh, Ersted's result was a good approximation of. Take the limit of this as uh, L goes to infinity, which means evaluating this limit. I can pull outside a lot of the constants. Uh, the way I usually evaluate this is I divide top and bottom by, uh, by L. I bring uh, the 1 over L in the bottom uh, uh, inside, so it becomes squared. And now then, as L gets very, very large, becomes infinite, holding R fixed, this term drops out, and I get the square root of 1 fourth, which is just 1 half. <laughs> so I get uh, 1 over the uh, 1 half, and uh, 1 half of 4 is just 2. And so uh, 1 recovers for the infinite wire uh, exactly the, uh, the same expression that uh, the Ersted experiments uh, uh, show. Well, uh, I'm not sure that, uh, uh, sometimes uh, I've seen people use this and put together a bunch of finite straight uh, wire segments to put together a total magnetic field of a current loop, uh, but uh, certainly one of the, one of the dominant uh, reasons for looking at it is an application and then showing that you recover that, uh, that infinite uh, current carrying uh, uh, wire result of Ersted.